Hey guys, welcome back here to Extreme IE. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is OSPF version 3. Let me just write this in here. Version 3 to route IPv4 prefixes. Now, yeah, we'll also take a look at v6 as well. We'll just kind of put that in parentheses. But, but let's face it, nobody cares about v6. The fact is, is that we can use OSPF version 3 that was originally designed for IPv6 in order to route IPv4 prefixes. I mean, if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. So let's take a look at how we actually set this up. Now, we are going to run process ID 1. We are going to run everything in area 0. We're obviously not going to be using BGP. And what we're going to do is we're just going to form basically an OSPF uh, version 3 peering between R1 and R2 here in our, our uh, network diagram. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's take a look at how we actually set this up. So I'm going to go on to R1 here and normally what we would do is we would go in, we would say router OSPF version 3 and we would configure everything. Now the thing is is that we're now using an, an IPv4 address family, right? So even though we're using OSPF version 3 and even though we're going to be running that with an IPv4 address family, we are still going to have to enable IPv6 Unix cast routing. Let me show you what I mean. So if I say router OSPF version 3, and I actually spell it correctly, and I enter my process ID 1, you can see it barks at me. It says, yep, yeah, no, sorry, buddy. IPv6 routing is not enabled on the device. So I have to say IPv6 unicast routing, even though we're going to be using OSPF version 3 in an IPv4 address family. So, you know, just one of those gotcha points, one of those things you guys got to pay attention to is that if they ask you to do something like this in, a, in an NP exam or an IE exam, or even in the real world, if you're working for uh, a company and you want to consolidate your OSPF uh, into one process for both v4 and v6, you have to be aware that, that even though you might not be using v6 just yet if you're going to plan out an installation with v3 you're going to have to enable ipv6 unicast routing okay now since i'm already in the process what i'll do is i'll go ahead and set myself a router id here now what i want to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add this ethernet 00 interface on both routers into my process so i'm going to go ahead and say uh, interface ethernet 00 and i'm going to use this command ospf version 3 and what i'm going to do here is i need to enter my process id followed by let me actually hit the question mark here followed by what kind of prefixes i'm going to be passing okay so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and say ipv4 the next thing it's going to want for me is my area and of course as the diagram states we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this guy in area zero and you can see what happens instantly it says, yep, no, sorry, no can do, because we don't have IPv6 enabled on this interface. Let's go ahead and let's assign this guy an IPv6 address. So I'm going to say IPv6 address, we'll say 2016 colon colon 1 slash 64. Let's go ahead and try to do this again. You can see that by assigning this guy an IP address, I've gone ahead and enabled this process. What I want to do is I also want, I'm going to pull this off because I just want to show you guys some of the some of the different things here that can happen. I'm going to peel off the IPv6 address as well. And let's just try to re-enter our OSPF command. It barks at us and says it's not enabled. I can also come in here and say IPv6 enable and then be able to enable OSPF version 3 on the interface. So so either way, uh, either one will, will give me what I need. In other words, either I can assign an address to the interface or I can come in and say IPv6 enable. The idea or the point, show IPv6 interface, is that I'm going to get a link local address on this particular interface. So here's interface uh, E00, and here's that link local address that I'm going to need. And why am I going to need that? Because it's going to be used for my next top information. It's going to be used for OSPF to essentially form the adjacency and all that kind of fun stuff that we learn about in IPv6, right? So so now that I have, let's say do show run, now that I have this running, let's say do show run interface Ethernet 00. And uh, we'll take a look at this. This is actually from an older uh, OSPF version 2 configuration that I had. By the way, if I want to go ahead and set this interface to a point to point I would say OSPF version 3 we're gonna prop in our process ID I'm gonna say IPv4 because remember now that you could be running an IPv4 uh, instance here or an IPv6 instance and you need to tell it exactly what you want you're gonna say network and then you can go ahead and you can say point to point okay so that's how we would set this particular network if we're using OSPF version 3 to a point to point or you know a point to multi-point or, you know, let me just hit the question mark here, or, you know, whatever we want, right? So I'm just going to hit escape here, or I'll say control C. Control C, there we go. All right, so show run uh, interface Ethernet 00. There's our configuration. We're going to run this guy uh, as an OSPF version 3, process ID 1, area 0, 
in OSPF version three for IPv4. So let's go over to R2, and we already kind of know what we're going to need. So let's let's just go ahead and let's do it. So we'll say config t IPv6 unicast routing uh, interface E00 IPv6 enable, <clears throat> and we'll say OSPF version three process ID one area, oops, sorry, IPv4 area zero. And what we need to do is we also need to change this guy to a point to point. So we'll say OSPF version three, one IPv4, and I'm gonna say network point to point. Okay, so now at this point, we should have OSPF that comes up. Now, the reason why we have this down state here is because OSPF did try uh, under the broadcast network type, which should have been the default here on the, uh, the ethernet segment. Uh, but you can see now that we have a full adjacency that comes up. Now, what I want to do here before we check our adjacency is I want to say do show run section router OSPF and, and take a look at this. So we went in here and all we did was go in and we, we, we actually in here we didn't even go into the process. Here we just went directly under the interface and automatically, automagically as I like to say, we got this configuration on our R2. So I can go in here now and I could say router ID 2.2.2 or whatever I want. I don't, I don't really want to do that at the moment because we're, we're going to keep this video pretty short. Show run section router OSPF. You can see here that we did go in here and set the router ID before. But we now have the addition of this IPv4 address family under OSPF. What I want to do here in the point that I'm showing you is that I want to go in here and I want to say redistribute connected. So I'm going to say redistribute connected and I want to hit the question mark. Here in OSPF version 3, we're not going to have that subnets command. So, you know, we can still change the metric type if we want to. So, you know, by default, it's going to be uh, metric type 1, right? We know that. Or metric type 2. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll say redistribute, uh, redistribute connected metric type and we're going to say one because you know i like one we know that two is going to be the default the wires got crossed in the brain there for a minute and what i want to do here is i want to say show ip ospf neighbor and i get nada i get absolutely nothing i want to say show ip route ospf and i get absolutely zilch but yet i know that i have a neighborship up and running right i mean it's pretty apparent we got the log messages up here it says hey we're loading we're done right so so how do i look at my adjacency here what i want to do is i want to say show ip ospf version 3 i got to spell it right version ospf version 3 neighbor well that doesn't work either so what is the right command here? You gotta love Cisco. Show OSPF version three neighbor, and here you're gonna find where we have a full neighborship. Okay. Now the cool thing is, is that this command in version three is actually gonna show us also the IPv6 um, uh, IPv6 address family. When once we do that in, in a minute here, which is which is kind of cool about this command. But I kind of left out this one over here. So all we need to do is basically add v3 at the end of this guy. And it will show us the routes that essentially we're learning. Because remember, we're not in OSPF version 2 anymore, which would be just to show IP route OSPF. We are in version 3 now. So that's how we would basically take a look at this in an IPv4 address family. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's light up v6. This is going to be easy. So we'll say interface E00, IPv6 address. And I'm going to say, we'll say 2016 colon colon 1, because this is R1. So we'll say 64. What I also want to do is I want to add this. I want to give this guy a, a um, I want to give its loopback 0 an IP address just because, you know, we can. We need something to redistribute, right? So we're going to say slash 128. Oop, I forgot the uh, address command here. So we're going to say address. So do show IPv6 interface brief. We're going to say exclude unassigned and also admin down interfaces. It, just so you guys know, if you don't leave out the admin part, it's going to give you all these, all the admin down interfaces. And I hate that. So this just kind of slims it down for me. So I'm going to have my global unicast addresses here. So this is my loopback. This is my directly connected. And here's my link local address. Let's go to R2, do the same thing. So we'll say interface E00, IPv6 address 2016 colon colon 2. Uh, slash 64 interface loop back zero and we're going to say IPv6 address 2022 colon colon 2 slash 128 do show IPv6 interface brief exclude unassigned as well as admin down interfaces and here we go so let's go ahead and let's just pop this guy uh, pop this guy in a notepad. We'll say do ping or, we'll, or, or copy paste buffer rather and uh, and so we'll double check make sure we can ping directly and we can 
So now let's get OSPF version 6 up and running. In other words, let's get OSPF version 3 with IPv6 up and running. So we'll say interface Ethernet 00. OSPF version 3, we need my process ID. This time, instead of saying IPv4, what I'm going to do is say IPv6. And I'll say area 0. And what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this same command. I'll go over to R1, say Ethernet 00, and we'll pop this guy in. Now, I'm going to say do show OSPF version 3 neighbors. Oop. Do show OSPF v3 neighbors. There we go. And you can see that at this point in time, R1 is getting an adjacency with R2. We just didn't set the router ID. No big deal for this short little demo. And you can see that here, this guy is going to be in two-way druther, whereas this guy is a point-to-point. -point. So you can have different network types if you want to. OSPF v3, uh, we're going to say process ID 1, IPv6, and we're going to say network type point to point and we can go ahead and we can pop this guy on the other end as well so that's what we'll do we'll go on to r2 we'll pop this guy on as well do show run interface ethernet 00 and so now we're setting both ipv4 and ipv6 to point to point networks yes you obviously can you just saw it you can have different network types for ipv4 and ipv6 so this is basically what our version 3 configuration would look like let's do one last step here Let's say router, OSPF v3, process ID 1. I keep forgetting that F. There we go. And I'm going to say Andrew's family, IPv6. And what I want to do is say redistribute connected. By the way, same options for metric type, etc. So I'm going to go on to R1 here, router, OSPF v3, process ID 1. And I'm going to say Andrew's family, IPv6. And I'm going to say redistribute connected. Let's control C out of this guy. And I'm going to say show IPv6 route and spell correctly. One of these days, they'll put a spell check in. Let's actually shorten this guy up. Let's say OSPF. And you can see the loopback zero interface that we got in on R1 from R2, right? So R2 advertised his loopback zero in over to R1. So let's just let's just check here. Let the moment of truth. If if you're if the last seven minutes of your life have been worth it. So we'll say ping 2022 colon colon two. We'll source that from our loopback zero interface. And we have IPv6 reachability from our loopback zero interface. So our L0 interface here to our loopback interface here. We have IPv4 and IPv6 reachability. So I hope you guys learned something in this video. I hope you guys uh, hope you guys were able to put a new tool in the toolbox and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.